Hello, everyone. I'm here to tell you about the Neuralink crypto token, the new cryptocurrency that will change the world forever. Tesla coin would still be hundreds of times more powerful. Now, today we are launching an investment project that is working right now. If you see this video, absolutely everyone can earn it. Everything is very simple. Watching this video, you're one of the 10,000 lucky people who will get an iPhone 15 Pro for just two dollars. Click the link below to claim yours now. So a few months ago, I was scrolling through the replies on a Trump tweet because I hate myself. And I came across a reply that stood out from your normal high IQ political take. It was a screenshot of an Elon Musk tweet with an insane amount of likes saying that he was giving away free Bitcoin. The author of the tweet was very ecstatic about this. So excited, in fact, that they found the only proper response would be to tweet the president. Now, if you saw this in the wild and it didn't raise about 50 red flags, there's really no helping you at this point. But if you saw it and you happen to be a little curious, stick around. A quick disclaimer, this video really isn't about exposing a dark network of Nigerian princes. It's more about deconstructing all of the technical skills required to pull something like this off. Now let's assume your average Twitter user has just finished up eating their bowl of MSNBC headlines, and for whatever reason, they decide to open up a new tab and type the domain into their search bar. If they did this somewhere around December of 2019, they likely would have landed on what appears to be a friendly blog post by our boy Elon on the friendly blogging platform known as Medium.com. The problem with this version of Medium.com is that it is definitely not Medium.com, and whoever designed this shit must be on a Looney Tunes level of planning traps, because by directing the user to a more familiar interface, they're more likely to associate the trustworthiness of Medium.com with their not-so-trustworthy alternate site. And because we're working with our average Twitter user, we can reasonably assume that they have the attention span of a fruit fly walking into a Venus flytrap. They will likely forget the fact that the address that they typed into their browser was not Medium.com, but rather elongives.info. And instead of questioning it, they will start reading Elon's totally real blog posts, presumably in his voice. The post goes on to explain the details of what is essentially the most recent iteration of the Nigerian Prince scam, but with lower stakes. The original Nigerian Prince scam was a 20th century iteration of the Advance Fee scam, which itself dates back to the 18th century. After clicking the links located within the blog post, our Twitter user will end up on yet another fabulous looking site. This time, however, it's littered with a bunch of stickers showing the price of bitcoins or some shit, and smack dab in the middle of their field of view is a QR code. In all seriousness, what I found most interesting when I first came across this scam was that the target audience must be incredibly narrow. They need to fit the criteria of being technically literate enough to use a Bitcoin wallet and have the financial means to supply that wallet with currency, but somehow technically illiterate enough to not understand how easy it is to spoof tweets and websites. The most common demographic targeted by scammers is always the older generations, the boomers. But if anything, boomers should have enough life experience to know that there's no such thing as a free lunch. So then who the fuck is falling for this? Well, this is when I thought back to a 13-year-old me who managed to somehow let a scammer talk him into granting him remote access to my family's computer so that I could play Minecraft. With that in mind, and the fact that the majority of parents underestimate the lengths that their kids will go to to buy Fortnite skins, I think we can safely say that a large number of the victims in this case were in fact Zoomers between the age of 12 and 15, who have somehow managed to hook their parents' debit card up to a Bitcoin wallet. But I'm not about to rule out Facebook moms or anyone getting an MBA as well. So the user scans the QR code and up pops their favorite Bitcoin app with which they send $5 never to be seen again. And honestly, this is a harmless little gag. And I personally think that in the same way that the Venus flytrap improves the fruit flies genome by removing the idiots from the breeding pool, we should have more Bitcoin scams to remove these children's families from the middle class, or at least make their parents use content blockers. And because I respect the scammers for the service they do to our society, I'm going to make their secrets available to the world by reverse engineering this scam. After this, everyday college students who were robbed of their Trump bucks because their parents claimed them as dependents can take back what is rightfully theirs. So the first step of this scam is probably the most easy, and it's creating a fake tweet by editing HTML. Knowing how to edit HTML will always be one of those skills that comes in handy. It's great for anything from getting past content blockers to freaking out your parents with screenshots of fake headlines. The internet itself runs on this thing called Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and uses this thing called Hypertext Markup Language, HTML, to render content on websites. But who gives a fuck? Just open up Twitter to your favorite celebrity, press Control shift c select the text you'd like to modify, then type some misleading shit. 
Now take a screenshot, open up your alt account with hundreds of followers, and watch the money come in. Wait, we skipped over a couple steps here. First off, assuming that you have a life, it's likely that you don't have an alt account with a bunch of loyal followers who will blindly retweet whatever you say, especially if it's a fake tweet asking them to go to a domain that doesn't even return a site. We'll get to the site later. So how to dipshit over here get 200 likes on an obvious scam? Well, in case you've managed to avoid the daily news cycle for the past four years, the answer is bots. Bots, you say? I thought I had to be a shadowy state-sponsored organization organization with plans to undermine democracy to wield the power of bots. Not really, you just need some basic googling skills and a couple hundred bucks. The couple hundred bucks is for buying a Twitter account with a large following, and the remaining eight shekels will buy you 250 likes on anything you post. Enough to get you to the top of a president's reply. Okay, now that we've got a fake tweet, a fake account, and some fake clout, it's time that we make a fake website. More specifically, we need to make a website with two pages. The first page needs to look like medium.com. The second page needs to look like a cross between an Overwatch Pornhub ad and a slot machine. The first page is relatively easy. You can copy the design of just about every site you come across by hitting Control S, opening the page in a text editor, and you guessed it, editing HTML. What's great about this is besides what you modify, the page will keep the same functionality and feel as the public site, assuming the site that you're spoofing is publicly available. What this means is that if a user were to become suspicious of your fake medium site and decide that they want to start clicking around, just about every link they click will take them back to a page that is therealmedium.com. Every link except the ones that take you to phase three of this scam. This page would probably be the most impressive assuming this background art wasn't stolen. But let's not pretend that these guys give two shits about copyright infringement. After doing some art theft, we just need to set up our Bitcoin address so that children can anonymously send us their parents' money. Now, if you're following along with me at home, congratulations, you've just committed about three felonies, and we'll likely need to commit another three to avoid getting caught. It's now time for you to move to Thailand, live your days out as a freelance Scratch developer, until the inevitable day the IRS kicks down your door and you're hanged for tax evasion.